All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we speak, talk, chat about everything Commander related. And today's show is a fun one, literally. Uh, Top 10 (laughs) fun cards, (coughs) 12 cards, but fun for the table. So if your games are feeling a little boring, you need to spice it up, maybe add some of these cards to your deck and uh, we get net fun value out of the table uh, our definition is going to be under debate here we have some saucy takes on what cons- what is considered a fun card in our list but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along but how to overall increase the fun of your games is today's topic but before we get into it this show is brought to you by card conduit the easiest way to sell your magic cards card conduit lets you skip all the typing time and work associated with buy listing their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value one or more and you'll pay just a five percent service fee you can use their sorted service where you list and sort your own cards and pay only two percent you get a detailed report and fast payment you get another 10 percent off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtg goldfish uh, so once again that's mtg goldfish uh, is our code so thank you to card conduit for supporting the show and with that out of the way, let's get into some fun cards. So we're, we're saying fun for the table. So theoretically, if your opponent plays these cards, your, your net in- entertainment value increases. Uh, so this is a, a top 10, which is really just 10 cards we put together. But maybe we should actually try ranking them because we got some controversial takes here. And the first controversial take, in my opinion, Seth, is yours. So what ah. is the first <laughs> card you have for us? Okay, so uh, I know some people don't like this card, but humility, I would say, is actually... (laughs) Uh, No, I I didn't really go with humility. My actual card, so here's how I thought about this, is I wanted cards that whether I play them or my opponent plays them, I'm pretty happy that they showed up in my game of Commander because they create interesting moments or do interesting things. So my card, number one, is Chaos Wand. Chaos Wand... It's a three-mana artifact. You can pay for and tap it in exile cards from an opponent's library until you hit an instant or sorcery. Then you get to cast that card for free. Uh, This card, to me, I think just leads to really fun moments. It's random. You can't really control. You have some politics over who you're going to choose when you target Chaos Wand. And its ability ranges from super powerful, like almost game winning. You could hit an insurrection or just something ridiculous and win the game to downright do nothing for four mana. We've seen people spin into like painful truths or dead ramp spells. So I have found Every time Chaos Wand is activated in a game of Commander I've played, I've had a good time. Like, the table seems to have a good time. Everyone's into it. Everyone's hyped. Everyone's, like, waiting to see what happens. So, to me, it's one of the most fun cards that can show up in a game of Commander. I'm going to be gatekeeping your fun today, (laughs) Seth. I'm going to be the Grinch. (laughs) What fun do I get if you either waste your turn doing nothing or spin into a game-ending threat? I'm still sitting here doing absolutely nothing. (laughs) I love it. I, what what I, fun is it for I, I'm me? I'm on Team Seth. I, I like, mean, I, I yeah, like same. soft chaos, and I think it's exciting. You know, you spin into something, and it could be good, it could be bad. I remember, like, uh, very historically, like Krim, uh, we had like a commander clash moment. I'm gonna have it linked if you're if you're watching the video, if you're watching it on on YouTube. I'm gonna have a card pop up uh, that shows uh, when uh, Chaos One goes wrong. Uh, hitting basically blanks, but then there was one time where somebody, uh, where Krim, I believe, still also Krim, just like, or no, it was Seth. <laughs> Krim loves this card. <laughs> Seth, Seth uses this card to great effect. I I cast a a, a winning spell, not a winning spell, but a, a spell that would have been beneficial for me. And Seth, in response, uh, chaos wand into a, a counter magic spell. It was very clutch, very cool. But the randomness, I do think, kind of makes makes it very entertaining for the table. Yeah, I mean, also it's just so, super fun, right? I, I, I'm. I think if my opponent has this kind of fun, I kind of get some of that. Fun. I don't know how to describe it. Like if they are do, doing something funny or cool, I see it as well. So at least it's entertaining. I would say Wand of Wonder is. I mean, it's it takes a bit of randomness out of there because you target every opponent. But I've spent games just casting Wand of Wonder and then every turn just activating it. I didn't win, but mm. it was it was pretty fun. I wouldn't do it every game, but yeah, well, I, so what do you think cool about Wand of Wonder? I feel like yes. that might be a that, that helps a better you to version. not brick. 
I feel yeah, like it's, Wand of Wonder it's, 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 less fun. It's less fun. It's, it's less fun. It's a better fun. card, but I, I would say it's less fun because you lose that tension. Like, what makes Chaos Wand yeah, fun you get the, uh, is the sure. chance of you whiffing. Like, it could go wrong. I think that's what makes it such an engaging moment. If it's a Chaos Wand that you know you're going to get something good every time, then you're just, like, a card draw spell. Then you're playing a tally or whatever. Like, that, that's, like, better and more powerful, and it's probably fun for you playing it. But I think the fun aspect for the whole table for me with Chaos Wand is the chance that it goes wrong and that goes away once you play the Wanda Wonder version because you know you're going to be hitting good things. You do roll a die though. I don't know, that is I, extra you, what's, what's that, what's that random, dice uh, roll commander that Tomer always plays? The one that like if you high roll you <laughs> you, you get like more combats or something like, like Dina or what was uh, it? Uh, Delina? Wild oh, Delina. Yeah. Yeah, is that fun? It's like it's a high variance yes. card. Does that make it fun for the table because it's high variance? <laughs> Wait, yes. are you, okay. Like are you are you actually telling me, Richard, you don't enjoy watching Chaos Wand Resolve? Like, because when I was thinking about this, you could say, oh, what's fun for the table? Group hug cards. Like, you, you play something that draws everyone yeah. cards each turn. I don't think that actually, like, I don't think it's actually that fun. Like, it's just, like, well, adding more resources saucy, to the game. To <laughs> but I don't find Howling Mind to I, I be, like... I rolling us with the... Yeah, we have some controversial... Genesis ultimatum or something. You know, whatever ultimatum you rip off Phil's deck does not lead to fun times. <laughs> you know how it people keep fun. saying fun is subjective? This is the podcast. This is, <laughs> this this really, is the podcast. Podcast. This really... <laughs> oh, <laughs> it is indeed subjective. I, I think you guys are mean. You just want to watch people <laughs> chaos board, board into, like, an X spell where X is zero. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, isn't that, that hilarious? Is cool just, like... This is the Schadenfreude episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what this is. It leads to cool moments. Like everybody profits from them. It's in in the end, every game is just a bad beat story, and sometimes you're the winner, sometimes not. At least the story is cool. If you, I, 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 I will say it leads to cool stories. But like yeah. here, here, here's a funny story which I love. Right, remember the time Krim swords the plowshares my commander on turn one. Yeah, right. It's a great story, hilarious story. It was a good story. Would you say Richard had fun in that game, though? <laughs> well, I, I would have said, I'd be like, like yes. Richard the rest of the table. The game of Commander. I want this to happen to me because it leads to memorable moments that we can talk about for the rest of our lives. I thought it would be but, a good teaching moment, but alas, it did not teach Richard but, anything. But really, though, have we ever <laughs> yeah, seen right. Chaos One be broken? Like the the peak of Chaos One no. that we've seen, I think, is like me spinning into the counter spell and countering Tomer's random halfway decent thing but like yeah. most of the moments have been us laughing about like wow Krim hit another painful truce somehow he hit a painful truce and then activated again <laughs> shuffled back into the same yeah. painful truce which is like just like ridiculously unlucky and hilarious so I've never seen I mean. we, the we love the we love the Stumbling over yourself and then <laughs> <laughs> wasting your eight mana or seven it's, mana. Right? Oh, yeah, but sometimes it gets like the nuts, right? Which I think could. is good. But I, I will still run Wander Wonder. What about over Opposition it. Agent? I play it <laughs> and then Seth cracks a oh, fetch into okay. it. Is that funny? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. All right, all right. I'm, I'm not taking any more crap from Richard. Richard, you're next on the list. When you read your yeah, card, what's... everyone's turning off the episode. So let's let's move on to Richard's card, and we'll see if we what think that, that one's oh, fun. No, I didn't even see it. What is wrong? All <laughs> right, I got I got thieves auction here. No. It's a seven. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, set aside all cards in play, starting with you. Each player chooses one of the cards Ow. set aside and puts it into play tapped under his or her control. Repeat this process until our, all cards have been chosen. Oh. You know, I've heard fantasy football is like really up a, <laughs> one of the most popular things you can be doing. Limited. Everyone loves draft, right? What, yeah. what if we just draft all of our permanents? <laughs> huh? Did... did I Richard, love did this. Did he get possessed honestly. by Krim? Like, this is the I, most I, I, you want, you want, troll you card this ever. Like, how is this troll? You, you get to... You get to evaluate the board state and try you to get to, you get to You get to say, hey, guys, we were having a game that was progressing. Let's... Everybody just... Everybody just, like, let's go into this whole stalemate. Let's slow things down horribly take like 10 minutes to resolve this garbage spell everybody doesn't know what their permits are doing now because everything's been jumbled around so you have to reassess the entire game so it slows down the rest of the game forever and then god forbid everybody anybody has like the same sleeves yeah so like once afterwards when you want to actually like uh 
put uh, put away your decks. You're like, oh, oh, where's my card? Where's oh, where's my expensive card? Oops, I, maybe I t- maybe maybe somebody else, maybe Richard accidentally took it, and I took one of Richard's cards. It's just like it's a disaster. This is awful. So you're saying That's... it creates a unique gameplay moment, Tober, <laughs> I, but, that you would but, never yeah, experience we otherwise. Didn't say it's... Top unique gameplay <laughs> moments. It's... Top ten game unique <laughs> gameplay moments. No, he said fun. I gotta say, I'm on Richard's side here. I almost no! included uh, the Great Aurora in here because I love when it resolves. The problem is, and that is the same with Thieves Auction, only online <laughs> in paper. It is very tedious. I love Thieves Auction and even better, the Great Aurora. But uh, it is, uh, oh yeah, resolving it in paper seems kind of horrible. I. So far, everybody's scooped when I cast Great Aurora. <laughs> I'm and scooped. That is not that. fun, yeah. <laughs> Warp World almost made my list. That was a, one of my honorable yeah. mentions. So I also like that effect. Although I will say, I don't really like actually resolving Thieves Auction. I do think it's funny, and I do like how it involves the whole table. But I don't know. I think you're just as likely to get a groan from the rest of the group as a cheer when it hits the stack and resolves because it is kind of like a tedious process to actually like go through the the, the actual mechanics of the card. But what, what, what about like scramble verse or something where you that's don't the only have card, to? That's the only you card don't I have to like more. sit here and do a draft. <laughs> no, I hate that even more. I think Moto it handles it fine. But do, imagine doing that on paper. You'd be like, all right, so each each permit on the battlefield has <laughs> yeah. to be randomized. So you have to be all right. So, so each you person, shuffle them all into a deck and just deal them out. out right? deal. Oh, well, yeah, no, right. because you, can, no, you, you no, have no, an no, optimized no. for the process. To work. Well, no, because people can get less permanents than others, right? Like, haven't we seen that happen? And like oh. someone ends up with three permanents and yes. someone else has 20. Yeah, You have to be like, <laughs> okay, you assign a number to oh, each person, no. a D, and then you take a D4, <laughs> and then, all right, this permanent, roll the dice, all right? You get that. You got a one, we give you that to, to do, Richard. Tomer? Next one, we roll a dice. No, this is awful. I, is I think awful. Thieves Auction is actually more fun because the draft process is really cool. It's a neat idea fun. to like draft everything on the table. So I'll give it to you richard I'll, I'll give it to you i think it actually no. is kind of fun scramble bulls, <laughs> and i'll automatically I was, scoop this one i'll probably scoop how about that? i was on the fence <laughs> as i was going into this conversation i was on the fence if i was going to call it fun or not but seeing tomer's saltiness pushed it into the the fun camp for sure that was the <laughs> that was just, the just, final this is just gonna fun. rise on a tober forget what the rest of the table though tober's reaction to the chaos card is what yeah. really puts it over yeah, the top but, okay what if there was a non what if there was an absence of tomer at the table would you still consider it fun Oh, yeah, yeah, what if, we get what to if people are like, hey, you're playing at an LGS with people you don't know. Would you be like, oh, this is a, I'm, I'm going to show them a fun card. These option. Ooh, what about Look scramble cool first? And let's let's you get copy to play it. With cards that didn't start in your deck. What about, what about if you what about you scramble verse and you somehow copy it with like the new Chandra or something? Or you, oh, you win it back. And you Could you imagine it. I mean, would you even re- oh, would you even resolve Thieves Auction multiple times? Wouldn't the draft go the same? Is there even any point no, no, to you, doing you it a second time? Auction, and then after the 20-minute draft, you scramble verse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or just, yeah, Homeward Path or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, if you play. Like, oh, we should do another Chaos episode on Commander Crush. It'll be like, you, great, you, you guys can do it. <laughs> It's fun. It's people love chaos, Tomer. Popular episodes, Tomer. Yeah. Clearly, it yeah. must be fun. At least on <laughs> MTGO, it handles it in an instant, except oh. on the tediousness of the paper. And you don't Tell lose one, your cards afterwards. One thing about uh, this kind of cards, if you play Brand in your board to get all your permanents back while keeping the opponent's permanents, I... I would call that even more fun just out of respect. Honestly, I don't know if anybody, <laughs> like, if anybody pulls off Thieves Auction into Brand. Cool. <laughs> that is impressive. I wouldn't be mad. Did you just Although it's your, not really fun. But did you just mad. move your Chaos card down on the list, Homer, so, yeah. so you wouldn't have to immediately go <laughs> no. into it? <laughs> no, because I, want, yeah, I, wanted some, I wanted some change of pace. I didn't want okay. just a full okay. list of Chaos and then a full list of okay. other stuff. But that's okay. a good segue to mine, actually. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for, thanks for ruining uh, the future, Seth. But I do have a Chaos card here, but it's not going to be the one I'm talking about right now. The one I'm going to be talking about is actually a fun card. It's a Zen Descent into Avernus. It's a three-mana red enchantment. This is at the beginning of your upkeep. 
Put two descent counters on Descendants and Vernus, then each player creates X treasure tokens and Descent deals X damage to each player where X is the number of Descent counters on Descent to Vernus. So on your first upkeep, you deal two damage, you put two counters on it, you deal two damage to each opponent, everybody gets two treasures. Then your next upkeep, you get four counters, uh, or four, four damage, and, and two, and it keeps going on and on like that. The thing I like about this is, first of all, it's your upkeep, so you get the benefit of these treasures first. And also, it deals damage to everybody. And that means it progresses the game. Not only is it progressing the game by helping everybody get mana, you get the mana first though, which is nice, but also it deals damage to everybody, so it is progressing the game at the same time. Like two damage, whatever. Four damage, that's starting to get a little bit saucy. Six damage, that's that's starting to hurt a lot. And I really like that. I like the, the group hug aspect of it with also the pain of being like, let's end the game, fellas. And that's great. I I do like that it ends the game. I think sometimes group hug cards, since everyone's benefiting, it tends to end with people like settling in for this long slog of like drawing extra cards. I like that this has an ability, but also is going to make sure that sooner or later the game is actually going to end. Yeah, I mean, when I asked on Twitter, I asked people on Twitter just like, what's your personal most fun commander card? This one a lot of people brought up. I hadn't, I don't know if I've ever even played with this card. Is it even on Magic Online? I feel like I've never actually played so. with or against this card, but a lot of people, a lot of people pick this card as their favorite. So I have it in my Zedru deck because you can just give it away to somebody as well. Um, and then Zedru also gains life passively. So it works. It works really, really well in 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 a Zedru deck. Um, but also, yeah, I've, I've spoken to people, and they usually cite Descend to Avernus as a a very popular fun card. But it's not I available mean, online. It, it I'm, I'm cool all for this card until the damage it. part. You don't like the damage <laughs> part. Richard just it, wants it's the like you, I've locked the cheat code. You're like, yes, I have unlimited mana, but now my game is ending because <laughs> I'm taking too much damage. Good, so, right? I. I mean, also, everyone just, has just give me the power mana. a little longer so I can play with it, you know? <laughs> yeah, but that's the, that's the fun of it. You get more and more power, but it's also like time is ticking down much faster on everybody. In in reality, though, like I have to imagine that once people are getting six or eight extra mana each turn, you're probably going to die for not uh, for other reasons. Like once people mm -hmm. have access to that amount of resources, I would guess that it's actually not Descent to Avernus that's killing people most of the time because someone's going to just go off with all the mana they have. Oh, it's all fun and games until Dockside shows up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, Dockside, you, you can just sacrifice your treasures in response. Okay, and then oh, the person who played the Dockside kept all their treasures. Everyone else had to sack their treasures <laughs> yeah, to okay. prevent the Dockside from popping off. All right. So, so it's still a net win for Dockside. fun because Dockside exists. <laughs> is that what you're trying to say, Richard? <laughs> Dockside makes a lot of, of cards unfun, that, that, right? That's Tover's big thing. He makes everyone play this to increase the fun that he's like, Dockside. I do not play Dockside <laughs> in any of my decks. Right. Doesn't this just speed so up the is. game? I mean, it is cool, obviously, if you have extra mana, but that's like just Torbo charging the game. Unless you have some uh, synergies with the treasures, it's just... Hey, everything happens fast. I know. I'm not saying that it's not fun, but I imagine if that happens every game, it's just oh, this is power magic now, and we just shorter games with more spells. Not to knock the card, I'd be yeah. fine with some. So, so the game steers, like everyone's just... playing like Durly Battle Cruiser magic, so you get to kind of skip to the end game. Yeah. But the the downside, which probably happens most of the time, is your decks are like. This, this effect is not symmetrical for all decks. Certain decks will take advantage of the mana a lot better, and they'll just, like, snowball and win. Like, if you're a Storm deck or something like that, like, you're like, oh, cool, free mana, then you win. And people are like, I cast Archangel Avacyn or something. So that's the problem with group hug cards in general. Usually, even though they're theoretic, theoretically symmetrical, like, some decks take better advantage of it, and they'll just win the game. And other decks will just drill around. But... Um, if you all play Battle Cruiser Magic, this is great, right? <laughs> Skip to the end game, start playing your 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 battleships, right? Do the thing. Just well, play Eureka. Just, I mean, well, obviously, I, I run it right to the end game. <laughs> I run it in a deck that benefits from it, Zedra, right? So I get yeah. benefit because I can donate it, and I have a I have a life gain strategy, so I'm less likely to die from the burn aspect of it. But I still think if I play it in Zedra, people are not going to be like, "Oh, you're getting more advantage of it. That's unfun." I think people are still going to enjoy it, it. 
is it still fun if people are playing like I'm just like an yeah, EDH rack and it seems like the most popular commanders are like Sulfum, the Red Terror, Nehab, stuff that can really benefit uh, by doubling the damage or like somehow getting uh, advantage out of it. Like, is it still fun in that context, do you think? Like if your deck actually is good with <laughs> this in, in it or and you're not just playing it to be like, hey, everyone do cool things. And you're like, ha like, gotcha, double damage. Well, my question is, would you rather Sulfum play Descent to Avernus or just like some spell that just says like take 15 damage? Yeah, okay, that's that's fair. I guess I would rather... Some treasures out at of least it, I right? get some treasure. Yeah, okay, okay. That's that's fair. It's not like all front-loaded. It's just two at the beginning and then four at the next turn. Like, it yeah. has a ramp-up time. Okay, well, I guess it's fun. All right, Phil. Hit us up with the all fun right. card. I got a card that... I mean, the name implies that it's fun. <laughs> Life <laughs> of the Party. Uh, never seen this on Clash because it's not online, but... Oh, these stats. Four mana, zero one. First strike, trample haste. When it attacks, it gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of creatures you control. And when it enters the battlefield, each opponent gets a token of this, and the tokens are goaded. And uh, it it sounds a little weird in the beginning, but I hope it makes sense. So everybody gets this O one or X x1 basically with first strike mm -hmm. and trample and haste and they can smash each other they can't attack you um but they won't really block with it like you would say oh you can just chomp block with it but it technically just benefits everybody but they can't hurt you so you just give them beat sticks and uh you have your own and it has first strike trample and haste so mm -hmm. it will hurt somebody but the cool thing is you can just watch the table beat each other up but Technically, you just gave them something. They're not like they're going to sacrifice it or something. I mean, they could, but it is a good creature. I, it's just, it seems like such a fun card uh, pretty much for everybody, but it, you're not part of the resulting carnage. I don't know. We haven't seen it on Clash, sadly. I don't think it's, it's on cool. online, but like, no. I think what you need to do is you need to pair it with can't be blocked. Like uh, Bedlam, I think, is like a card that like creatures can't block because otherwise... Your opponents, I put this in Zedger, uh, your opponents could just be like, hey, uh, you swing at me, I'll block with mine. And then the other person will swing and block with the other one. And then they just kill each other's tokens. <laughs> you take trample then... damage though, right? Do you, you take trample, trample you damage. Take damage. damage. Yeah. And, and also they're you, not yeah, good blockers then... too, because there's zero ones as they're blocking. So they're not going to trade or anything. Yeah. Um, oh, you're right. Yeah, you can't block. You can, yeah, well, yeah, you, you can just block, block to. Have <laughs> it's a chop block because it, it doesn't get the plus X unless it's attacking. No, it's more like, do you want to get rid of this from your board? Then you can you could chop block. So it's not like that. It's not like super easy to just counter this by attacking each other. But if you do want these elements to stick around, you might add like bedlam or whatever to, sure. to stop the blocking. I if love this. Card, it, this is pretty oh. sick. Yeah, you can blink it. This was one of my when we did Streets of New Capenna like top ten cards. This was one of my one of my picks from the set, and I've never been able to play it because it's it's not on Magic Online. But I really just I love the design of it. To me, this card is exactly what I look for in a fun card. Everyone's doing something. Everyone's into it. I do think that all the points you're making are true though, and I am a little concerned that. If your opponents don't want to be part of the fun, they can trade them off in one way or another. So I think that does like. I think it reads more fun than it plays. I'm afraid when I play it, like one person's going to sacrifice it. The other two are going to trade them off with each other. I'm like, oh, like that. That didn't go the way I was hoping. But the maximum like fun level of this, if you're everyone does play along and it's swinging around the table, seems hilarious. That might make it even arguably more fun because your opponents can opt out if they don't enjoy it. <laughs> and you're still always left with the original. <laughs> you're, you're, but you're always left with the original. So even if they trade it out or sacrifice the copy... Like, you still have a creature that is going to be hitting pretty hard with First Strike and Trample. So. I want people to attend my party, Tomer. Have you ever yeah. You ever have a party and no one shows up? That's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have everyone put, everyone involved. Put, yeah, uh, Creatures can't block. And then and then you're you're having super fun. <laughs> or, or creatures must attack each turn. Yeah. Like I mean, that's cool. That anyway. it as well. well then this then also turns on set spike field hazards. So I don't know about this. Got it. Yeah, I'm not afraid of this card. <laughs> <laughs> I got an MDFC for that. Or, or like an Urabas uh, or like a blind obedience effect where all creatures enter tapped. That gets around them trading off as well because it must attack. They don't right? trade. So, 
I mean, you can just jump block with them, yeah, but they can at least you can off. trade them off. So one yeah. player keeps I think, them. I like this I card a lot. I think this I is guess a fun one. The first strike does actually make it kind of harder to trade off too, doesn't it? Like, if you have a bunch of creatures and you have first strike, it's not like your opponent can just like put a one one in front of it because the first strike is going to kill it. So I, maybe it's actually harder to kill off than it looks. That's a beefy boy. I, I didn't I like get to play with it yet, sadly. I would would love you know to what? tell you, but it's going back in Phil, Phil convinced me it's going back in Zedru. All right, Seth, what do you have for us? Ooh, I have a, a tempting offer for you, Richard. Intempt with Discovery. This is a card that I think is really fun and also really good and also probably a bit of a sleeper because people don't play it as much as they should. Uh, Temp with Discovery, it's it's pretty simple. It's a four mana green sorcery. You get to tutor a land from your deck onto the battlefield, any land, not a, not a basic land. And then each of your opponents gets the choice to do the same. For each opponent that chooses a land, you get to tutor up another land. So uh, maximum uh, effectiveness of this card is you would tutor out four lands and each of your opponents would tutor out one land, which actually happens way more than you think. Because once one opponent actually chooses to take a land, the other ones do the like, well, they did it. So now I got to do it too or I'm going to be behind. <laughs> um, so you actually get all four lands out of it pretty often. Worst case, if everyone is responsible and says no, which almost never happens, uh, especially if I'm playing because I'm definitely taking the land, then you still yeah. get any <laughs> land for four mana, which is not that bad. Like, it, yes, it's a little overcosted, but you're getting any non basic. So you're getting your Field of Ruin or your Cabal Coffers or whatever. So I think this untapped. is another that's, yeah, untapped even. So this is another card that. I think it's fun because it brings the table together. Like, if you've ever seen this card resolve, there's usually a five-minute conversation about, like, who's going to actually get the land, and then uh, two people agree to be responsible, but the other person's <laughs> maybe not going to be responsible, and then the two people are like, oh, well, if you're not going to promise to do it, then I guess I got to do it. And Seth, I gotta, it, have you I heard of the card called Ristic Study? It's the funnest card yeah, yeah, you can imagine. Card if, you, if you like this, you don't study. draw with Ristic Study. I love study, Ristic you know? Study. Your opponents get to opt in whether or not they want to pay the water or not it's so fun yeah like, i love okay i love this card i play it all the time it's a great Same. card for me to cast but is it fun for different opponents no because i'm like, like i want to be a responsible gamer but then i have seth at the table for me and he's like i'm just gonna grab the land it's like okay i guess it's, i guess that person's just gonna get four lands of it's choice. fun for me because i'm Field getting a free land out of it thespian <laughs> stage and then some bonus round thingy <laughs> God. I mean, I play it in almost every green deck that isn't too creature based, and sadly, the table has kind of been very mature about getting the lands. And so, I think the last two times I cut it, I got only one land out of it, maybe two. Uh, the times where you get four though, and get like Temple of the False Gods and. Whatever, ancient tomb, so and now you're mana positive, bad, and maybe yeah, you insane. can get whatever you want. I Earth the card is just saga. amazing, and they don't have to do it. It's like I think it's fun for the table. They might underestimate how much more fun it is for you, but that's that's not my problem. I mean, they gave them a land. Yeah, don't be picky. So here other <laughs> lists fun. I could put this card in top ten unfun cards. <laughs> uh, <laughs> top ten cards so powerful that I I think I should cut them from my casual decks. <laughs> Just uh, top ten cards hands. you don't want to see your opponents ever casting. Uh, I just don't want to see them cast. <laughs> top ten green cards of all me. time, maybe. Like this card is so insanely powerful that I I actually really don't play it that much anymore because it's too strong. Because you get the combos like your opponent gets a land sure but you have put lands in your deck that you know you're, you'll be fetching out and you can get the two card combo so you can get like coffers and um urborg or something if you're playing that or you know you can get maze of it uh vesuva maze of a thespian state like whatever you can do whatever you want with this right you can fix your mana you can get yamamaya and something right like world tree so i i actually play it for four mana tutor like not you know uh, any land and then if oh, anyone yeah. decides to uh opt in which they often will then oh, you wow. basically just won the game here because you just like shot me ahead four lands but th those four lands are not four lands right they're like eight mana or something nine mana <laughs> yeah. or whatever right like yeah. field of the dead and a billion things right so dark depths yeah this, but this people, is people could this say is very no. suspect set that you would people, consider this fun. They could say no. <laughs> people could say no. And if you look at if you look at EDH rack, it'll blow your mind because 
I don't think people know that this card is good. It's played in group hug decks. If you look at the decks that actually play it, it's like Glunch, uh, KNT, Feldegriff. It's this uh, isn't a card that people treat like a staple and just jam in every deck. Like it's a people see it and they play it as a group hug card because they think it's helping their opponents. So I think I don't know. I, I think I think the I, main uh, drawback is that it's very easy to build to 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 play against because you could like it's so easy to just say no. Right, like is I like Risk Study. I've never seen it, it happen. Is. It's a very. It's I've a, seen let it me happen. tell you. I'm just telling you. I, this is an intervention. It's very easy to say no. Just say no. Yeah, yeah play this against... because you, you fear the next person will say yes, yeah. and you're yeah. behind. Yeah. At least Risk Study, you you get like more chances in the future. Yes, Risk Study. Risk Study is what like, is what right? Cast a spell, you have to think about that. Unless you have an agreement with the table, of course. Like I, I try to do. So I, I've had like a situation if, where people just all say no. I'm like, okay, you're responsible gamers. Now it's an overcasted ramp spell, and that that that's all could that's what it could be. It could just be an overcasted ramp. It's spell. not even overcasted because yeah, it's like it's, the only way to get a, a non basic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's but, not yeah. bad. Intense. It's not bad, uh, but like so ahead of the game, problem is that like a Seth, Seth scenario usually happens where somebody's gonna sneakily say yes. But but if everyone says no, was it a fun card? Not really. If everyone says yes, yeah, I don't is it think really a fun a, card? You just made our chess fun, fun, fun <laughs> I love fun. it. I'll so, play it all oh. the time, but it's not fun to play against, I don't think. So I play it a lot, okay. and I played it against newer players, and interestingly enough, I read the card to them, and they said, yeah, why would we get a land then if you get one too? To be fair, the last person then said, well, actually, I get one. Uh, but yeah, it reads kind of weird to apparently from different so when i read it at first i thought like oh everybody's just gonna get a land and first time i played it it happened and now on commander clash nobody gets a land anymore which is probably correct but uh, man, don't worry i'll be back the other players yeah, so yeah if the other players mana screwed <laughs> yeah. they're gonna i i you know i'm saying no i'm saying no tom says no <laughs> that, <though? laughs> but, but, but sets at the table you still saying no I'm saying yes because he's gonna be saying yes, and then I, I'm. Basically then it's your fault then. Yeah. He hasn't done anything yet. If, if Seth me. promises me he says no, then I'm going to say no. But he has to promise me he's not going to do that. See, Seth even this con- even this conversation is pretty fun. Yeah. I think we're proving right fun? now with our debate about fun? how this card could resolve. Is this fun? That I'm it's having a fun... about as fun as resolving <laughs> these auctions. <Seth. laughs> yeah, you get to set aside your game of commander and enter a 20 minute philosophical debate about something. <laughs> yeah. That's what commander's for. Also, some people, I'm the comment section will, somebody already has it. I'm pr- pretty sure they're deleting the comment right now. But people often say the best way to counter this is all three opponents say yes and they grab a strip mine and they strip mine the opponent's lanes and they feel very clever about that. Don't do that. <laughs> You, then I have my best lands in my graveyard. That's even that's just as good. That's so much better than saying just no. I, I, I actually want to see that now. That sounds mines. hilarious. Yeah, first of all, people aren't really running strip mines anymore. But yeah, strip mine, strip mine the best lands that I just fetched. And okay, now I have an easy spun to reclamation. Just say no. <laughs> all right. Uh, my next fun card. I think is very fun. I think this is the epitome of fun cards. Let's see if you guys agree. Howling Mine. Two mana. At the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling Mine is untapped, that player draws an additional card. Who doesn't love card draw? You don't think this The person casting fun. this going down a card to two mana, but everyone else is benefiting, right? Every turn you draw more cards. You don't like this card. Wait, do you tap it or do you just play it for? Like, I think if you tap it, you feel clever. If you play it, you play it, you tap it, you're a jerk. Like, that's not fun at all. <laughs> Richard, do you like this I mean, card? Sure. Richard doesn't play this card, do you? you don't, I don't play this it. card because I don't want to sacrifice myself for the fun of the table. But if someone is willing <laughs> to be the martyr <laughs> for the table... <laughs> These are supposed to be fun for you and the table, Richard. I mean... So it is kind of fun to have cards, right? So I agree with that. I don't know, but like, is Howling Mine, is it a fun card? It's kind of boring. Like, all it does is give everyone an extra card each turn. Is that yeah, not fun? Isn't the most fun thing in Magic the Gathering no, draw, drawing cards? But if everybody quote, has Seth, cards, Tober, where's, where's, where's the where's the I ten minute fun card? Where's the ten minute debate? Where's the where's the tension? <laughs> the potential of it whipping? This is just too easy. It's just like draw, draw. Like there's there's no yeah, there's nothing. 
I mean, I do I like having these... extra cards, though. Yeah, but I don't think it's cool if my opponent has also all these extra cards and has interaction. I feel like this, <laughs> if everybody gets rises, it just stays the same. Like, if, if they draw more counter spells, that is greatly reducing my fun. Like, if, if Krim plays this, I'll actually... <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> if you have more deck. Y'all look at the, so let's say let's say you built a bad deck, which let's let's be honest, we probably all build bad decks. You don't put the num- right number of lands in, the right number of card draw. Maybe you only play like one piece of spot removal, you need more. How do you let's you like draw into it, fix sure. that. Right? Like you you're Especially playing like random tribal picks. deck with no card draw. How do you fix it for you? <laughs> you need a you need a wrath for some reason and you only played one. This this helps you dig into it. It so, fix it like it's like the great deck smoother. It like <laughs> makes everyone's deck runs more cleanly. I've been running Howling Mind for over a decade now because it came in my Zedru precon and I've kept it ever since. And I like it there because that's kind of the theme and you can give Wait, it why, away. Why does it benefit Zedru? Because if you, you give it donate. away to somebody, oh, you give it, you give it. Then okay, you're drawing okay. two cards. Yeah. Your opponent's already drawing one. It, but it's still it's still a net loss compared to the rest of the table, right? You're drawing one card. Three of your opponents are drawing a card. So you're down negative two cards compared to the rest of the table. And then if you have Zedru, then you're negative one. <laughs> but I still like I like it in Zedru because it's kind of a little bit of a group huggy theme, so I can get away with n- my nonsense. But like, right, I would you play House out. Rules where Howling Minds just starts on the battlefield <laughs> when the game starts? Oh, Ooh, so everyone gets an extra card. So you Ooh. don't you don't you don't have to deal with the <laughs> the fact that you put it in your deck and wasted a slot and wasted your time and you know you get the card last. I tried. You that. know what? Yeah, I would I would try that too. That actually okay. So maybe this is a fun card because I think act, I was gonna say that sounds fun. <laughs> so maybe that, I guess that means <laughs> Howling Mind <laughs> is a fun card to have everyone have an extra card each turn. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't have to put it in your deck. I really like the house rule of monarchy starts and whoever yeah. whoever hits whoever gets first blood gets the monarchy and that's how that's the monarchy point. is introduced. I kinda wish it was I just an mine, actual rule. I think would be fun too. Yeah. yeah. Just speed up commander a little bit, I guess. At least Monarch actually makes people attack too. I think Monarch's even yes. better than starting with Howling Mine, yes. but I, I would I would accept a Howling Mine. Yeah. All right. Well, would you accept everyone starting with the Chaos Warp? Tomer, what do you have for Heck us? yeah. All right. So I was, yeah, that was going to be my first card. He called me out. Yes. Everyone was talking about their Chaos cards. So I'm like Chaos. I used to be Chaos Warp's number one hater. Like if there was only one hater in the world of Chaos Warp, it would be me. And if there would be none, I'd be dead. But now I've actually slowly grown into kind of a Chaos Stan. I believe that's what they used to call it. Um, Chaos Warp, three mana, red instance. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then it reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. So if you reveal a non-permanent card, like an instant or a sorcery, um, then it does nothing, it whiffs. But, uh, if you hit any sort of permanent, it could be a land, enchantment, battle even, um, it goes directly onto the battlefield. The number one thing about this is three mana, it's instant, and it can hit, and it can get rid of any permanent. It could be a land, it could be whatever, it could be a creature, it could be anything. The most threatening permanent on the battlefield, instant speed in red is gone. It even deals with like enchantments, which red normally doesn't do. That said, usually, like nine times out of ten for me in my personal history, is whatever I flip is going to be as bad or worse. And that's just my luck. Statistically, it shouldn't be happening, right? Statistically, it shouldn't be happening. But like, I'll hit a Jinkataxius, and whoop, wouldn't you know it, Jinkataxius is back. Or I don't know, I, I traded it for, like, an Omniscience, and now I'm now I'm just super sad. But I will say, and this is why I started re-adding it to my decks, is it's very entertaining for the table. Everybody's like, oh, what are you going to hit? What are you going to hit? And even if it's horrible for me, the person who cast it, it's still very funny for the rest of the table. So I, I've now turned around and said, not only is this a good card, but I'm only going to start writing it. Because it does have that entertainment factor of, oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Yeah. Although it gets less good if you're not salty about it. That was part of the fun is like <laughs> Tomer being like, ah, this card's horrible, horrible. And then he actually has it and someone hits a crater hoof and he dies. Like, yeah, okay, I guess that's I guess that's fair. So I can see why you hate it. Me? I don't know. <laughs> I, I love this style of card. I this is to me this is fun. Like yes, it's a removal spell. I guess it's boring, but it leads to those moments. Everyone's into it. Everyone's waiting to see what comes off the top of the deck. That's to me that's like peak commander fun. 
those moments that the, these cards can build. Yeah, it's the same with Tibbet's Trickery. Pretty, pretty much yep. this is the mm-hmm. removal spell and Tibbet's Trickery is the counter spell with the same the same type. And both of them are like reduces the field spell a lot for the opponent. Kind of like Arcane Denial lets them draw a card. So you kind of deal with your problem, but also you don't make that much of an enemy. And it's funny to just flip a card off the deck or fun. Uh, yeah, love the cards. I don't play it too much. Don't be tripping. This, okay, <laughs> this, this is a this is a red staple. People play it, it because it's the yeah. best removal spell <laughs> in the so format. Fun. It can still be fun. Yeah, red. It's Even in thirty three percent of decks, and you think it's because it's fun? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's also I, fun. I said it was a staple <laughs> because like ninety percent of the time, what's coming off the top is garbage, right? Yeah. Like you're not hitting their zero one cobalt token with this. Like, oh no, it's gonna get upgraded. You're hitting like their game ending threats, and like how many of those are in the deck? You know what's fun? Every Every draw phase, someone draws a card to over. And you're like, well, what could it be? What did they draw? What did they draw? And they put a spell on the stack. Like, what could it be? Look, you can <laughs> What's tell this me? card they're casting? I don't know. There's what? many unknowns. Like, Look, what? Like, you can <laughs> tell me that there's like an 80% chance that whatever I chaos warp is going to be worse than whatever the target that I put away. And you'd be correct. Statistically, you'd be correct. But 100% of the time, it's going to be worse for me. And that's a statistic that I care about, Richard. It's, it, it's, it's like saying Ad Nauseam is a fun card because in 5% of the times, they like hit something that kills them and no, they didn't expect it. Because you know, people like... are like invested in what the result is. Everybody's like excited about it. I, I think Richard just has a very different definition of fun than than we do when it comes to a game. If you ask CEDH players the definition randomly. of fun, <laughs> they'll be oh, like, God. yes, yeah. chaos Wait, more. <laughs> CEDH isn't allowed to have fun, are they? <laughs> this is Exactly, this is the best card. This is Wait. one of the best, most staple cards in existence. So you're like, How you know, Richard, best equals fun. We'll run a poll. We'll have Chaos War versus Thieves auction, and we'll let the people decide. <laughs> oh, which oh, there's more fun. No way! Thieves I think Richard doesn't gonna... like destroy Chaos Warp. I think Richard actually. You know what? Okay, we can do. A, we can put four options on a YouTube poll. We can each pick our our best one and put it on there and see who wins. Yeah, we'll do it. We can do an actual poll. So, so yeah. I want tempt tempt the discovery. <laughs> chaos Warp. It's fun. Yeah, chaos it's like is Source the Plowshares fun over? Is Source the Plowshares fun? Nobody does. You can have have totally randomness. blow someone out with it. Oh. There's no Seth randomness. Understands. Yeah, it's the moment. It's about oh, the moment. Hit I, I'm a boomer. Happen. I don't understand. This is blowing my mind. Right, we're gonna make a poll. <laughs> you you have fun worry. every time there's a red deck at the table. I, I adore you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> every time there's a red deck at the table, it's the <laughs> funnest game you've ever played. Phil, take us home with uh, less problems. Yeah, Richard's going to love with. this one. Uh, fractured Identity. Five mana, exile target, <laughs> non-land, permanent. <laughs> Each player other than the controller creates a token copy of that. So unless you target Richards, the rest of the table has fun. Sure, one person is completely left out of the fun. But if three people have very much fun, at some point, the masses overweigh the single person (laughs) because everybody gets to have fun. Except, I mean, the person had fun. They had the permanent before. And then everybody else you has cast fun. it in a fun way because I've only seen Tomer kill people with this. <laughs> That's so we haven't seen it. Right? I, do you actually like see life. a consecrated sphinx and you're like, let's go mm. fractured identity, the consecrated sphinx? Whoa, yeah. Oh, <laughs> if yeah, like hit a mall drifter, that's like a super secret yeah. rendezvous, essentially. Yeah, I, I mean, I it's think if, if that's how you cast it, it's good. Yeah, I think if you just play this and it's not a combo piece, I think it's like super fun. Although I think yeah. you are right that you see Tomer try to do like nine lives. Is it nine lives? Is that the combo? <laughs> yeah, that nine, lives. Yeah, nine, lives. Yeah. nine lives. Fractured Identity, Patrician Scorn to win the game. Or if somebody has Phage, and you Fractured Identity Phage, and then everybody gets a copy of Phage and they all die. That's fun. I, that's Wait, fun you. for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I love it. I, I, I think that's fine, though, because there are some cards that it's really how you play them, like uh, determining how fun the actual card is. So I just uh, even though there is a combo that might not be fun, I still think the card itself is fun. Do you think the nine lives combo is fun? What's the most fun thing I can target with this? Uh, hmm. The least fun or most fun? Doubling season. Most fun. (laughs) Life of of the party. If that's a fun card, we target another fun card. I think this doesn't work. (laughs) Blow our mind. Life of the party only works if it's a non-token. Oh, if it's not a token. Okay. 
Okay. The howling mine. The Think of how much fun that game would be. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> the descent, people just die if there's three ascent in the furnace going. <laughs> but the, Ooh, the one or two turns jewel. you have left are going to be glorious. Think about all the cool. treasures you have to draw cards. Coveted from. jewel would make for a wild game. Yes. That would be Ooh. that would be interesting. That's a card I actually think is fun. But we'll get to that later. Plot would be fun. Yes, are we in agreement? This is a fun card. Fun. No nine lives if, allowed. If, if, if you funny. play with it with the intent of it being fun, but you can be really mean with this are card. You the nine lives combo isn't fun. I. <laughs> I think I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's fun for the lives. caster. It yes. is entertaining. <laughs> it's unique. I like the lives. uniqueness. I mean, we're <laughs> gonna age. we're gonna have the same debate with my next card, which is actually like <laughs> super similar in the sense that I think you can play it and have it be super fun, but you can also make it unfun. Uh, which is Possibility Storm. Possibility Storm. Oh, I love this card. Five man enchantment. When a player casts a spell from their hand, you exile it. And then you exile cards from the top of your library to get a card that shares a type with it. You get to cast it for free. Uh, and this impacts everyone. So I, uh, how this works is it hits the battlefield. You cast an instant. It goes away. You get a random instant. And it's going to just keep going like that for the rest of the game. I think that's super cool and super fun. It adds this element of chaos. You never know what's going to happen. Your ponder could turn into a, I don't know, an ultimatum of some kind. You never know. You're like, you never know what's going to happen, which I think is really cool. There also are locks with this card. Radith Magistrate is probably the most straightforward that keeps players from casting spells from anywhere, uh, anywhere but their hand. So if you're playing this to lock the table out of doing anything, then it's definitely not fun. But if you're just like YOLOing this in a random deck with no synergies, I think this is like one of the most fun cards that can be on the battlefield. Really comes up from Tomer. Oh, it's a chaos card though, Tomer. Really? This is yeah, the kind because, of chaos you can get behind. All you do is you you, you add in Dranith Magistrate. No. And what Dranith Magistrate <laughs> says is you can't cast no. from exile. That's the one way to make it unfun. <laughs> no. And then you no. can cast all the spells and your opponents can't cast any of them. It's so good. I don't it's see so the fun in that, <laughs> to be honest. But it's, it's like, it. I think it's like Fractured Identity, though. You could do the miserable thing with it. But if you don't do the miserable thing, it's pretty fun, right? I had it in my I mean, I... Borka list for that. And also, <laughs> it, Melborka sees all the exiled cards. So if you have like a Draco randomly in your deck or something, you, you <laughs> exile it as you're casting your spell. And Melborka is like a 16 power creature or whatever. And you punch people in the face. That's fun. Did we see someone? On, is more fun, but I don't did know. we see someone on Commander Clash play this, and then someone else played Dranus Magistrate and locked them? Did, is am I missing? Yeah, I, made you, that I made you the deck, and then okay. you refused to play the Commander. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. So, <laughs> so, so I accidentally comboed someone with this. Because oh. I think I had the Magistrate or something. Someone else played Possibilities. So you guys are explaining to me how the combo works. Okay. <laughs> well, I think you stole it. You stole the Dranth Magistrate from like oh, maybe Seth's that's graveyard. Yeah, I can't remember. I something oh, weird oh, happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. The game. It was a sweet game. <laughs> so I, 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 I think this card is very fun. I there, what, What's the other card where you exile cards under it and then when you cast a spell, you knowledge you get pool. the card I, under it? I have the story. Yeah, Knowledge oh. Pool. Again, yes, you can also lock people with that. Uh, but <laughs> if you don't do the lock, I think it's exceptionally fun. You get that random element. You get to cheat mana right? yeah. or cheat whatever. Um, so I and I actually really like it. If as long as you know, there's not a Jonathan Magistrate person on the table. <laughs> yeah, but think about it this way: everybody's having fun, but then the game has to end. So eventually, you find the Jonathan Magistrate and you end the game. <laughs> or it you can end that the just, game. It just the locks fun. everyone out. <laughs> yeah. It locks everybody. It out. just ends so the win. fun. <laughs> I I like this card. Be oh, I like this card Go because ahead. I usually play like a couple of two drops at ramp and then some unreasonably large bombs. So I could all kind of get value out of this just by the effect itself. If you play Bell Walk and get extra value out of it, like it's extra fun if you can feel clever by playing around such a thing. Mm -hmm. But man, if somebody slaps down Possibility Storm, I might just <laughs> pop off at random. <laughs> so, And it's not my fault. That's pure fun. Yeah, I like it. It actually but seems random, like you can still just hit a rain. You can hit like a ramp spell or something, right? Like it's not... Yeah, but you can also okay. get a ramp spell and hit... Uh, like I'm I mean, not just or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> you, you cast a Sakura Tribe Elder and you hit like an Ulamog or something and you cast Ulamog. Mm -hmm. That's super fun. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> We okay. need to do another oh, no. chaos week. Reading reading through this <laughs> list has me convinced we need to we need to do another one. I have a thing that day, but I go go have go off. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, next is me. Uh, coveted jewel. Oh yeah. Six mana artifact. When it enters the battle, draw battlefield, draw three cards, tap to add three mana of any color. Whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls attacks you and aren't blocked, that player draws three cards and gains control of coveted jewel. Untap. It's like Howling Mine plus Avernus, <laughs> like together, plus like the monarch aspect. So you get to draw cards, uh, you get extra mana, and then you force people to attack where they would probably not attack normally. Uh, this card is great, and it's also just insanely strong. Like, I, I know you guys say I'm at a disadvantage whenever I cast this, but like, I don't really think so because you get, you. Because you go down, right? You, it's like the howling mine problem. You are not the first person to utilize the, the resources. Someone else can get like free resources. But uh, even without blinking it or doing weird shenanigans, you can usually break the symmetry because not everyone will have creatures to attack with. Uh, or you cast it, you're super scary. The next person then takes it. So now they're scary. You get off scot free. <laughs> so uh, I actually... This is like the one card I will actually seriously play. Like it's fun, but I will actually put it in my deck and cast it because it doesn't hinder me in the same way that like say a Howling Mind would or um, Fracturated. Well, I guess Chaos Warp. Chaos Warp is number one. <laughs> but I really like this I, card. I would say that this is the most fun card on our entire... This might be the most fun card in all of Commander. Like monarch is the most fun mechanic and this is about it's super monarch it's like monarch that's on a ton of steroids so i would say out of our entire list this this would be my number one card if we're gonna actually just rank by fun i think it, yeah it's another card that you can kind of make unfun if you're doing the like i'm gonna just play it in sacrifice and yeah you know, whatever like Problem that makes it a lot that's less fun. fun but if you're actually that's gonna fun. have it like going around the table it makes for a really awesome game of commander so good good choice very very good choice yeah, I think you convinced us like like at least a year ago that mm -hmm. Covered Jewel is, is key. I've always enjoyed it, but you've you've been like the the main preacher of Covered Jewel and I don't know, I started putting it in a lot of my lists. I have it in Zedru, I have it in Brutaclad, uh I think maybe I have it in a, another list in another one of my favorite lists, but it's always just really fun. It's good value for you. You have synergy potential of artifacts and blinking and all that good stuff. And uh, even if you don't have any synergy potential, just it going around the table being super monarch, like Seth said, is, is just really fun. Yeah, it's the first card I think about when I think about fun cards. And to be fair, the most fun part about it is copying it with Mishra and then sacrificing it. But <laughs> the original <laughs> one's still there, so you can still get this no. until I sacrifice it. I'm sorry. I did also just throw it into random decks and just... do that. I don't know, go the entire table on this thing. It is just insane. I, the first card, the first time I saw it, I just thought, well, this is insane <laughs> what it does to the brains of the players, just <laughs> making everybody just mad about this. Or like, mad. They just do weird things for the jewel. And it, adding three mana and attack and drawing three, I would attack a lot if that was the default. That's a uh, big it's reward. Just such a cool cut. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Man. And it progresses the game because people are hitting each mm -hmm. other for it and stuff. They're like moving the game forward so everybody's taking Ooh. more damage than they otherwise would be. They're taking more reckless attacks than they otherwise would be, so less blockers. Just good. Would would you like house rules where the game starts with coveted jewel instead of the monarch? First blood gets coveted jewel. No. Or is it would that just no. be too much? I think the game might be a little bit too fast. That, that might happens. be a little too, too much. Swingy. Yeah. Well, because the first person that gets it yeah. wins because they, they, they get so three, uh, mana and, three mana and then people haven't deployed attackers yet to grab it back. <laughs> so they get another turn with it. And like I think it's, win, that's yeah. just like Raghavan on steroids or something. Yeah. Yeah. If you win the die roll and you, yeah, that, and you have that an early be. attacker with evasion, maybe, then you just, yeah. you're just you so far ahead. It's going to be almost yeah. impossible to get out. Raging, Raging Goblin, Commander Staple. So you could get yes. in and steal the jewel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move to my last card. Uh, I was I was waffling about because I have a bunch of other wins that I want to mention, but this is a card that kind of bucks the trend. Um, this is Stunning Reversal. It's a four mana black instant that says 
The next time you lose the game this turn, instead draw seven cards and your life total becomes one Exile Stunning Reversal. Now this card, objectively, not very good. It also doesn't help your opponents in any sort of way. So why do you think this why do I think this card is fun? It's just so hilarious when it works, it's going to be very memorable when it actually does anything good. Like it's a very is a very dramatic effect, obviously. Like setting reversal, you're about to die, but now you're oh you're at one life, you draw seven cards, you have one last chance to to do something to to win the game or something like that. But there's so many corner cases where it doesn't work that it doesn't end up being like overpowered or anything. Like if you're it doesn't stop your opponents from winning the game. If you're somebody does like a Thassa's Oracle, this does nothing. If somebody hits you with like poison damage or combat or, or uh commander damage, you're still gonna die to that because it's going to like not let you die, and then the static effect of commander damage and poison will kill you still. But if you're getting like swing that for lethal, drain for lethal, burn for lethal, there are cases where this is actually going to save your bacon and it's going to be very funny. And then boom, you have seven cards. So I've seen it cast like one time, or I've seen it cast two times. One time on Commander Clash where we learned that a commander damage gets around it and Seth died, which was hilarious. <laughs> which was hilarious. And then one time at an L- at my LGS, uh, somebody cast it and managed to win the game off it. Like they they survived one more turn from a lethal swing, and then they managed to they had seven extra cards and they won the game with Gary. And it was very it was very like wow. So eat, both times, two out of two times, small sample size, two out of two times, it was like super memorable. And I still remember both of those games to this day. And I played hundreds upon hundreds of commander games. So I think this card is fun, even if I'm not casting it. I like gotcha cards like this. Like this, this leads to this leads to that big moment. I almost put Mana Tithe on my list just because I like I like the gotcha cards that get people by surprise and they don't expect them. So this is a kind of card that I think is is very fun. It's like weird and janky and not overpowered. No one ever expects it, and then because no one ever expects it, when it does show up, win or loss, good or bad, it leads to those really memorable moments. And that's why we play Commander, right? Like that's we want those games where a year later, five years. Later, we're like, remember that thing, that one game we played where, you know, Seth died to commander damage or the guy my LGS won with Gary? Like, that's that's the whole purpose of this. So I, I agree. Like, it's a kind of an off the wall choice a little bit, but I think it would qualify as fun. No, I think a lot of. So you're essentially saying this card is so bad that when you win, <laughs> it's funny. Yes. Let me introduce you to <laughs> Kitkin Skeletons. Yeah, come on. Uh, like, just name any bad card. And then, you know, it's like so bad yeah, that you always expect them to lose. But when they win, it's super memorable. But it's but a is gotcha that really? Card. It's a gotcha card. Isn't that card. just the That's entirety of the Commander format, essentially? Like, everyone has their own unique deck. And when they pop off and win, you're like, ah, cool deck. Cool, bro. Right? Like, you know, like, but that's kind of normal. Is it not? No, I think gotcha cards are inherently fun. Like Rakdos Charm is, is fog another card. Funny? That's, well, I think Rakdos you attack Charm. people lethal. I fog. And, uh, I mean, it's I almost the same as fog, right? If, the, the problem is that yeah. the card might be stuck in your hand so many times that it. I mean, you know how hard it is and how unfun it is to cut a card from your deck. Maybe it's more fun to cut it and put another card in there than the one time you actually cast it. <laughs> I respect saying, oh, it is pretty cool if you cast it, but man, that is the most situational card I've ever seen. It's, uh, whew. Maybe seed time it, it, is another one. It's because one. it's bad. Like, is Teferi's yeah, protection fun? Oh, no. you're going to win. Let me eat Teferi's I mean, protection my way yeah, out no, of here. Like, how many times have you lost to somebody Teferi protectioning? Do you remember all those games? No, because it happens all the time. How many yes. times do you lose to somebody stunning reversaling? Richard I does have every a, single right. one because oh. it's a bad card. Right? Richard because it's does so it's bad that you're like, oh, there's no way it's gonna do anything useful. No. And then when it does, you're like, ah, got me. Okay, well, here's another gotcha card that I think is very good, and you probably have got got by it a couple times at least. Rakdos Charm. Have you ever had just like infinite creatures and somebody two mana Rakdos Charms wins the game off it? Yeah, that's yeah. always. Mm-hmm. I think that's a mm-hmm. hilariously fun card. Or it's like that a good, fun though. card though. I like spider fog. Spider fog's kind of like that, or like yeah. ink shield, or whatever. Yeah, yeah cards like that, like gosh, gotcha. well, counter spell. I guess you you were going to win the game with your combo. But look, I tapped <laughs> oh, two blue mana, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now you're rarity. dead. <laughs> like what you, the rarity, mana drain. I get to ramp. To be honest though. 
I, Richard the I kind of get like God a lot. <laughs> yeah, but that is it is so unlikely to get somebody with that that it's like the novelty of it is cool. Yeah. It's like C time, like two mana only cast it if mm-hmm. an opponent cast a blue spare this turn, and you can only cast it in your turn, but you get an extra turn for two blue mana. I tried it. I never draw it when Crim counters my stuff, but it would be fun for everybody. The one Actually, time it works. C time might be <laughs> fun for everybody. It's, know, it's like it's fade away. <laughs> the one time it works, you remember. Yeah. Fade away is good. But how many damnations have been cast that no one cares about because it just yeah. does the thing? <laughs> hmm. I mean, it. Uh, but that's what makes it fun, though, right? Like, the fact that it's so bad and you made it work. Like, yeah. look at against the odds. Like, that's kind of the whole point of that series. Yeah, like, there's yeah. way easier but ways to win that's the entirety of the format, but... though, right? <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, Richard does does have a point. But I feel like gotcha. I don't know. For some reason, the gotcha cards feel different to me than just, like, winning with something that's bad. I don't know if it's the surprise mode of them or... Yeah, I, I agree with you, but... Like then that means like ninety percent of magic cards are fun because ninety percent of them are terra bad, right? I I think it leads some memorable moments. Like if you if you got got by stunning reversal, you'd remember, and that's that's part and and it would be an enjoyable memory too. So that that's my argument for it. I don't remember I don't remember any fairy protections. They happen all the time, so it doesn't even does it, it yields no. No emotional response from me. Do, do you universal? think the fact that we play so much magic like factors into this? Like a new player would be like, I played some elves and then I crater hoofed them, pumped my team and killed them. That, that was, was like glorious. That was super fun. Yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. And we're like, wow, I've seen a hundred crater hoofs. Like, eh. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, do, I think, think it, it, like, just it the does. sheer number of games affects this. Sure. I mean, it has to. It has to play into it. Can you right? imagine- There's. Yeah, can you I, imagine I don't know. if every game had Possibility Storm? We get very tired of Possibility Storm, right? But yeah. I like and it new, right now. And a new player, I don't think, would find Stunning Reversal fun because they wouldn't understand how unlikely it is. Like, if you're someone that's new and you never played before and you just thought it was normal, you might not really, like, under like grasp the gravity of what's happening and, like, how... you probably play for the rest of your life and never see this card work again. But then this is your one it, chance it's actually that it actually happens. This is a cheaty card, right? They think they got you with the lethal damage and then yeah. you basically counterspelled an attack or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they might actually think it's unfun. So, But yeah, I All think right. that definitely plays into it. Fine, cars not fun. Interesting. Good, good choice, though, Tober. I got it. It sparked yeah, a twenty-minute discussion, and we've determined that twenty-minute discussions on a car are, are fun, very yes. fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on. Phil, round it out for us. Um, so my last card is Dance with Calamity. We haven't get to see it played yet, but I'm sure if somebody plays it against me or I play it, it is going to be the definition of fun. Maybe a little bit gambling, but. I'm going to read it again. Eight mana, shuffle your library as as many times as you choose. You may exile the top card of your library. If the mana value of the cards exiled this way is 13 or less, you may cast any number of spells among those cards without paying their mana cost. So you basically stop magic and play a game of blackjack until 13. And yeah, you can say it, it is just fun for the player, but it's like the novelty of it it is kind of like memorable situation creating but uh man that is a spicy card to play and i think it's just fun for the whole table just to see them they could brick like if they brick they wasted eight mana so i guess that's fun for you like it's an advantage for you i don't know this kind of fart card just seems super fun what would you My- is this a combo piece do you combo no, just for value just <laughs> You you could yeah, play it like it's a eight mana sorcery speed ad nauseum, but it's you very could play it like a bad ad nauseum, yeah. Yeah, but people are going to be egging you on. They'll be like, go again, go again. Go yeah. Again. I, so so if you've exiled ten mana worth of cards, yeah, hit me. You would <laughs> probably me. choose to stop. No, but you could say hit me. That's and no then fun. you could flip five, and you get no cards. Is, yeah, is that yeah. Yes. you get no cards? You got that's you how it works. Cards. It's literally blackjack. I uh, my definition going into this was cards that I would enjoy if I was casting or someone else was casting, and I think I would be very invested in watching Tomer, Phil, or Richard resolve this card. Like I think I would be having a great time seeing what comes off the top of the deck. As Tomer said, like egging you on, trying to get you to go over so you get nothing. 
So I think it seems super fun. To me, to me, it seems super fun. That said, I'm sure there's going to be CDH decks or something that could just like play this and win the game, like ad nauseum. And then it would maybe be less fun in that context if you do have like a I win combo built into it. But if you're just firing this off for, for value, that's amazingly fun. I feel like I'm the Grinch here because no one plays you this are. card for value. <laughs> what? Like, you have like, to, it was ad nauseum fun. Value. They might kill themselves. <laughs> but, but like, no chances way. are, no, they built their deck to just combo kill you right here. Nah. Then, and, like, if, if this really was given as a free nod. card somehow and you had to cast it, then this would be hilariously fun. But if you put it in your deck, chances are you just combo and win with it. Like, would that you put would it in your deck fun. and have, like, Emrakul, Emrakul's not legal, but you know, like 10 drops, 15 drops, or whatever. No, right? You you would never get those like funny moments. So this has to be like a random card that like you give to someone or something and like force them to cast it. And then it's very funny. Wait, if How they can force we do them to cast it, nothing bad happens. No, but they have to, I don't know. You have to force them to blackjack as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you force them to Mind blackjack. You could them, make people copy. Give them yeah. Dance of Calamity somehow. Force it sounds them like blackjack. you're building a film it, deck. It is good. It's like, well, though, what if you play Ad Nauseum and then flip like three 15 drop worms and you die? I'm like, okay, but like who's going to have that deck, <laughs> right? Like that's not usually how it, it turns out. I think that So like, how can we make this actually do the thing? Even in just it like a normal deck, I think this, it's. I think. Even in a normal deck, if you just look at like a, a normal deck that has a bunch of three drops and four drops and five drops, like I think that's enough to make this card really interesting. Like if you're playing like a super low to the ground, all the zero mana rocks, like a CDH ad nauseum type deck, then it's probably less interesting. But if you just threw this in, pick a random red commander in just a random deck. I think the risk is going to be high enough because even if you don't have an Emrakul or something, it's just going to ruin it on the spot. Like once you get up to like seven mana value, eight mana value, you're in the spot where you're like, you really want to keep going, but there are cards in your deck that ruin the whole thing on the spot. So I think, I think it would play out really fun just in a average commander deck. Like if you build around it in specific to break it and like tutor it up and this is going to win me the game, of course, like in that context, it's not going to be as fun. But if you just throw this in a random deck, I think it's going to play out very fun. I'm not even oh, sure if you can combo with this. Like, that seems 13 as the sum of your mana value in your deck in Commander. At some point, you're just giving up too much power in deck building. I think you have to play. Oracle. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you're you're yeah, but that's already two mana. Like, Eight what's mana the rest of your deck? Just. Liver. Okay. Even that, that's eight mana. You can do that for one mana. So I, yeah. I don't see. I think this card is actually going to be played fairly, if at all, unless somebody proves. I mean, it's Would CDH you play it might find a way. Like if you have a random I mean, red deck, you'd put this in as a card yeah. advantage card or something. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, if you, if the, like, if you say it's uh, the curve is like four, you could. I mean, you're get gonna get. Burn sometimes, but some prosperous. I kind of want to just grab a deck and just see if I can blackjack it. It, I, it, it seems it's pretty also very good with uh, scroll rack, right? Like if you have like some cards Ooh, in hand, and then you just point, put, yeah. put away six, and you cast Dance of Calamity afterwards. That's really nice. Wait, don't you don't you have to shuffle? Oh, you though? shuffle. Oh, you you shuffle yeah, yeah, you can't really yeah. stack the top of your deck with it. I Isn't it though? Like. like a bad Aminatu's Augury in some ways. Like, Aminatu... That's what it reminds me of. Like, Aminatu's Augury, except more fun, maybe, because there's, like, the risks thrown in, but also, like, the cap on how much you can cast with it. Aminatu's Augury was on my list, uh, but it's too much fun for me and not enough fun for my opponents. (laughs) I don't think... Yeah, as an opponent, I kind of hate that card now. Am I done? Yeah, kill me, Phil. Stop (laughs) dirtling and kill me, please. (laughs) You've got enough value, Phil. Please, attack. I mean, this card's not good, though, right? I don't think Dance with Calamity is good, but it's just fun. Okay. I I get behind fun, but not very good. I think that's right. That's why you somehow need to get it for free in the game and, like, not have to cast eight mana and then, like, force someone... It'd be funnier if you, like, blackjack and died. Like a Maybe black the, version ooh, where you play ooh, blackjack. And, and like if, yeah. you, if you go over, you die. And if you go under, you gain that much life or something. I don't know. That, what do, but something like that. That actually would be huh? pretty. That would be sweet. I guess ad nauseum is a little bit like that. But I yeah. guess that is ad nauseum, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's like if a ad nauseum eight mana. <laughs> list that is, is good with this, where it's like all zero drops and stuff. And then you storm off. The lesson here is all cards are fun. 
until you break them and then maybe they're not fun anymore. Yeah. Maybe it's all <laughs> zero, it's all zero drop artifacts or whatever and then Aether Flux. And then you just like cast your deck and you Aether yeah. Flux. Maybe. Sure. Eight mana though to cast this. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, you, not you, sure you that's what trickery, right. your sorcery or something. Yeah. <laughs> you chaos wand into that. your opponent's Dance of Calamity and then go <laughs> off. Yeah. You you let them borrow a deck. It's Dance of Calamity. <laughs> <laughs> Here, play, play this. <laughs> that's the long con. You have like four decks. Your friends don't have decks. You're like, I have some decks for you yeah. guys. <laughs> and then you're like a theft deck that needs like combo pieces for yeah. like every single color. <laughs> oh, that would actually you could hilarious. <laughs> play it in Oathbreaker as the signature spell for Chandra, and then then you can really just design your deck and just plus Chandra for mana, cast this on turns, whatever. Not too early. <laughs> At least you win. Although with Mono Red, what are you even getting? No, never mind. I think the card is actually hard to break. Like it seems very safe. And eight mana, even best case, 13 mana value is, it's nothing it, compared to something like Aminata's Augury. Man, the cut is not good, but it is fun. So if my opponent plays it, it is probably a benefit for me because they play such a bad card. The outcome can be cool and maybe good, but also maybe devastating. Uh, but uh, so are, surely are you it's saying fun. that I, you want me to bring a Dance of Calamity deck for the next Commander Clash and anything goes. I'll do it. <laughs> it's not a Modo. Oh, yeah. The, the Tober will break it. Tober, Tober will break it. Of course I'm <laughs> By break breaking it. the symmetry. <laughs> of course like, He's like, this card is very fun, but then I break the symmetry <laughs> and like, take all the advantage to myself. Therefore. Yeah. How, how dare I break symmetry on magic cards? The thing every Commander deck intends to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Yeah. That is our list of fun cards. We are all over the place, which makes sense because fun <laughs> is a very subjective thing. So if you're listening, tell us what your fun cards are. Um, yeah, do you think... What, what was our poll? What, what was the poll going to be? Oh, yeah. Thieves what are, Auction. What are the, uh, Thieves Auction, Tempt with Discovery. Tempt with Discovery. Uh, Chaos Warp. And Chaos what's Warp. For Phil? What was Contentious Phil. for Phil? Uh, I hate Phil. Hmm. Nothing too Life crazy, of the party? Right? No. Yeah, I don't know. Dance of Calamity? I don't, Fractured, Fractured Identity. Those doesn't have an easy the one. Richard not like Fractured Identity. Fractured Identity? Phil, uh, yeah. Richard, which one do you think is the least fun out of Phil's choice? So we'll go with that, I think. The least fun? Yeah, because yeah. I liked all of them. I feel Dance of Calamity because you'll never cast it and we'll never see it. All right, fine. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> so we'll do these auction... Uh, Tempt of Discovery, Chaos Warp, and Dance of Calamity, and we'll rank them. Pick your pick your most enjoyable one out of those four, and we'll have a, a community poll in the YouTube. If off. the premise is what is the most fun card, Dances with Calamity is going to win, right? If you read it, it's just fun. It's like <laughs> Chaos but, Warp is more fun. Though. But how are you going to cast I, your Dance of Calamity without the Tempt of Discovery lands, yes. Phil? Hmm? That, uh, <laughs> that, maybe that makes sense. <laughs> how do you... How do you and, and what if after you cast everything, they cast Thieves Auction? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. your dance of calamity did not wow yeah or thieves you just, auction uh, actually just win. go blackjack into thieves auction because it's the only non non zero oh, spell in the deck <laughs> <laughs> that's guaranteed <laughs> all, right. all right so that is our list be sure to vote be sure to let us know what your fun cards are whatever definition you want or if you have a different definition of fun let us know what it is uh we're open to figuring out what fun actually means uh, so yeah, until next time, see ya.